Hey everyone, my name's Rui and we are here. This is going to be week number four of the ICBA and we just came off our first win against the Lawrence Talent Flames and we are here up against the Birmingham Vulpixes if I'm not mistaken and this is a really scary matchup. So he has the Incineroar which I know from experience is really hard to break. He has an Aromatisse. I 100% did not expect the Aromatisse but the Aromatisse is going to be by far the most difficult mod for me to break through. He has a, a Claydol which is going to be a pain in the ass, a Dragonite which uh, has six owed me in the past before shout out to the PGL uh, playing against Grizzlock. I believe that was like week three or something like that and I just got straight up six owed by Dragonite and Aegislash which is a mod that I don't have too too much experience against but I know how scary it can be and specifically against a team like mine um, with the Infernape where its biggest threat is also going to be uh, susceptible to that King Shield it's going to be a really really tough matchup for me in general uh, again Breaking on Milotic, I know from experience now how difficult it is to break on Milotic, but Milotic, Infernape, and um, and Aromatisse on their own is going to be a really, really difficult trio to break through. And uh, a bit of warning straight off the bat, uh, this match in real time took 55 minutes to actually um, battle, so I don't know how long it's going to take to play uh, as a postcom, but... I know it's at least like 53 turns or something like that. I, if I'm not mistaken, it's 53, but I'll check uh, as soon as the battle starts. And man, I can't even remember what I would have let off with. But uh, this is definitely a long one. I am really hoping for um, to be able to do something with my team, but it's going to be a pretty long one. So let's see. Yeah, OK, it is 53 turns. Exactly. And right off the bat, he does lead off with the Incineroar. Honestly, a great lead from um, from when I've used it. It's generally a, a great anti lead, but he does uh, go directly in, into the Milotic. Now, I'm pretty disappointed in myself. I knew I had the free uh, U-turn in the situation and I didn't take it I, like immediately after I clicked Water Shuriken. I was kind of upset with myself because I really just should have gone for that U-turn, gotten myself a little bit of momentum, but uh, I do get five hits off for Water Shuriken with, for whatever that's worth, but he's gonna pop Flame Morb, and I do turn into a Bug type so that I can U turn straight on out. And from here, I know, I know that this is going to be a huge, huge difficulty to break through. So many mods on this team are gonna be difficult to break through, but I go into Celebi, which I figure is my is as good a play as any right now. And I might uh, try to get Stealth Rocks up early in this uh, turn here, or I might just go for Giga Drain. Uh, also, my Celebi set, I kind of didn't expect uh, Dragonite to come through. So my Celebi set gets 100% walled by... Oh, I might go for U-turn in this situation. I wouldn't be surprised if I just go... Yeah, okay. There we go. That's what I do. Um, I get 100% walled by Dragonite. My set is U-turn, Stealth Rock, Giga Drain, and Earth Power. So 100% cannot touch the Dragonite, which is going to be... Um, pretty big for me in the longer run because that means I cannot let my Celebi stay out there for too long because if he brings a Dragonite in that's at least one free Dragon Dance and if he plays it out well then he, it could end up being a lot more and it could again 6 me like I mentioned but he does uh, go straight into my into his Incineroar now here's a moment where I got a little bit overexcited again um I didn't play this beginning game too too well but i got a little bit too excited i wanted so hard to toxic that um aroma tease because i honestly felt like it was going to be my biggest my best chance of taking it out and uh he does knock me off with just so much damage but it reveals early on just how offensive it is i believe it is max attack um or something like that it should be max attack i, I just I'm not remembering whether or not it was adamant but hopefully i'll remember to leave both of our teams out in the description uh and he crits me on a U-turn. Now, hopefully, I, I remember to uh, put up a, a calc on that, but um, I had a decent chance to take that U-turn on at least a couple HP and um, be able to U-turn out on that wish if uh, he didn't crit me. But as it is, he's, he has to send out a Mon first. He brings out the Aromatisse, and, and right now, my only plan is to bring in Infernape and get a huge, huge Flare Blitz off. That is my only saving grace against this Aromatisse in my mind, right? 
but he calls that absolutely correctly. He goes out into the Incineroar, gets the Intimidate drop, forces me to attack into a resisted uh, Incineroar. Also, this is going to be a, um, another huge thing. Uh, he told me that he mistook my Flareless Recoil as a Life Orb Recoil, which honestly doesn't play too, too big of a deal, but uh, it will matter a little bit later on in the match, just FYI. But uh, we both end up switching. I go into Electros, and this lets me, I believe, get a free knockoff off on something. And he brings in the Aromatisse. I believe I knock this off right now, unless I just U-turn out. No, I do click knockoff. I get the freest of knockoffs on something on his team. And no more leftovers. So hopefully that can present a little bit of an opportunity. But I do know just how dangerous um, Wish, Calm Mind, Aromatisse can be. Uh, honestly, if this thing is Calm Mind, then it absolutely 6 0s my team. The team that I brought, I could have brought answers to it. I could have brought Gunk Shot on Mormons, but uh, I didn't. I honestly didn't. I didn't think he would bring it, and Aromatis is just going to be a huge, huge wall against my team for a lot of this match. So in comes my Celebi. Now I take the opportunity to get up my rocks, and hopefully that'll uh, hold the Incineroar at bay, but I know that it's also necessary for that Dragonite as well, so I had to prioritize it relatively early. I should have gotten them up earlier. I know that, I know that, I know that, but uh, this is just my when my opportunity presented itself. So now I just get a drain. I try to gauge damage, try to recover a little bit of HP, and uh, it just does nothing. It does absolutely nothing. So now I'm just so, I'm just getting so much more scared about this Aroma Tease and how, again, it can just so my team if it's Calm Mind. Uh, the fact that he's not trying to call my dub yet suggests to me that it's that it's not necessarily call mine. However, he could just um, be anticipating like a Greninja gunk shot or an Incineroar, uh, uh, an Infernape gunk shot. So who knows what could be happening here? But I did feel I I kind of felt that switch out coming, so I did go for the U-turn. Um, the fact that he wasn't call mining suggested to me that either he thought it was too early or. Um, he didn't want to just stay in a moon blast as I got healthier with Giga Drain. So I kind of felt it coming. I did go for a oh, and he wished. So of course the wish was the dead giveaway. I'm trying to sit here like I knew exactly what he was gonna do. Uh I knew he was trying to pass a wish as well. So uh, I did U-turn out as he goes into the Incineroar, and I'm able to go into the um into the uh, Infernape, now I really thought that he was going to fear a close combat because I could have close combated him in the face and probably taken this thing out because I was out of Intimidate. Maybe he calced it and I know it showed down automatically as the Intimidate. Maybe that's what happened, but I don't know. I wouldn't have stayed in that situation. Uh, I just U-turn out and uh, I go to my leg cross. Uh, he gets a huge, huge knockoff off on my Electros, which stinks for my Electros because I do think that my Electros are going to be pretty big for pivoting out, especially as the game stretches out. If it's a huge, huge long game, then uh, it's going to be important, I guess, to keep my Electros healthy. And I'm really not going to be getting too, too much uh, recovery off. But he does real rapid spin. I get a decent, uh, decently free knockoff off. And now I believe I just U-turn. I didn't expect him to stay in, but excuse me. He does reveal that he is a Scarf Play Doll, which is huge uh, knowledge to know. He is Scarfed in a Rapid Spin, which he's not anymore, but uh, he, I don't see him really being able to touch my uh, Electrons too, too much, so I just you, do U-turn you out as he goes into the Aromatisse. Now, I do go for Flare Blitz here, partly because uh, I felt, or uh, at least I hoped, that um, the Incineroar was low enough where it was in range to be taken out by a Flare Blitz. I wasn't confident enough to close combat into, into that Aromatisse, but uh, Flare Blitz does nowhere near enough. With the Toxic, it could be enough. I felt that this was a risk that I had to take, unfortunately. If he knocked off my Scarf, then that could have been game right there, in all honesty. I felt like Scarf was super necessary for the rest of this match, but uh, I was able to just Flare Blitz into it and get that KO. So finally, we were trying to break through a little bit. He does bring out the Milotic, which is a really uh, solid switch in. It's going to be a solid switch in for the remainder of this game. We are 21 turns in, so that is close to halfway through. We're close to halfway through. Um, he does recover up. Obviously, it's a pretty dang free recovery. But now I get to see this interaction, right? And I believe I go for U-turn, but uh, I am curious as to whether or not he does fear my Electros as a legitimate um, 
threat to, the, to its melodic, especially wearing it down over time. Um, but, oh no, I just go for the knockoff. That's interesting. Um, I don't have electric coverage on my electrons. Um, I really much prefer a more utility electron. So I know that I'm knockoff U-turn, uh, drain punch, and oh, dragon tail. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so this is also a very important point. So I was dragon tail to hopefully be able to take it from the Dragonite and phase it out with dragon tail. If it has a weakness policy, it'll pop uh, on the dragon tail and then switch out. That's why I love dragon tail against Dragonites. Um, but now knowing that he's willing to switch out on my Electros, that signaled to me that uh, he still has to fear my electric coverage. And the fact that I know that he fears my, my electric coverage a little bit means that um, I'm going to be able to scare out his Milotic with, with Electros. And here's another important thing. I believe he just went for a double wish. He told me that he ran out of time on the timer and uh, the game chose wish for him. He would have gone out of Dragonite as I set up the, those Stealth Rocks, uh, which would have been pretty bad, but it never ends up happening. So I set up Stealth Rocks. I felt that it was going to push out again. I go for the U-turn as he has in the um, Aegis Slash. Now, my Dark Pulse has a chance to KO even in shield form, so he knew he didn't want to risk that. He switches out into the Milotic, and now we get to at least see how much damage we are doing with a Dark Pulse in a Milotic. We know that we can't hit it on the physical side too, too well. And it does okay damage. It's not great, but it's not terrible. If I'm in a certain position, maybe I can wear this thing down. Oh, and here's and here I got excited again. I saw an opening. I thought maybe if I get a really high roll, maybe a crit, I don't know. Something can happen and I could take this opportunity, take it out. Oh, and also I could flinch it and prevent its recovery. And this could be a huge, huge opportunity to take out the Milotic and swing the door wide, wide open. But unfortunately, it doesn't happen. Uh, I don't get any flinch, any high roll, any crit, anything like that. So he's able to recover up to full as I have to switch out into my Electros. And here again, this is where that information from a few turns ago comes into play. Because I knew that my Electros scares it out on a potential uh, um, electric coverage move, it allows me to stay in and drain punch. Uh, <coughs> I believe I just drain punched to try to get some HP back because like I said, now that I don't have leftovers, I have to have to try to get health back in some other way. And now that he goes into the electro, uh, the aroma tease, now I see, huh, drain punch is actually doing kind of respectable damage. I mean, obviously I would hope for more damage against this aroma tease, but knowing that it's doing an, an okay amount of damage and that's going to allow me to Re regain some HP. I just keep going for a couple drain punches, but now now that he sets up a wish now I know 100% the the play next turn has to be to switch into Dragonite. That's why I just click U-turn. I know it's gonna get back up to full. I know I know it's going to get up. It's multi-scale, but I cannot mess around with this. I knew 100% as soon as he clicks wish he has to has to has to uh, go into Dragonite next turn in order to try to set up something with Dragonite. He ends up going for the Dragon Dance, and like I said, I was hoping that this thing would be weakness policy because now I can freely go for the Dragon Dance. Now that my Blast Choice is in, I can take any hit from this dang thing. I go for that Dragon Tail, and it gets phased out on that Dragon Dance. It's going to have to take rocks again when it comes in, and the Aroma Tease comes in, which is another really interesting turn because now I can get a relatively free Scald. I honestly expected him to switch out. I did not expect him to stay in, but Scald does a darn respectable amount of damage. It is a crit, so that was unfortunate, but uh, he just goes for Psychic into me, and uh, that's going to be another free Scald right now. As he switches out, uh, I believe, yeah, he just switches out of my Lotic, which again is what I expected the the last turn. It, if I, I kind of wish that I'd gone for the uh, Dark Pulse here, but I, I didn't. I just ended up going for the Scald. It does zero damage, but right now I'm just trying to disrupt a little bit, force him to, to come in on South Rocks a little bit, so I go for the Dragon Tail as he goes for the Skull here. Uh, I do love this Assault Vested uh, Dragon Tail, but I just, like I said, I just wanted to disrupt a little bit. I knew he was going to try to attack into me. So on this turn, I just decide to force a few things to come in on South Rocks. And getting this Aromatisse in on Rocks again is huge because now he's in a position where if he switches out, he gets KO'd to Rocks on re entry. 
And if he stays in, I have speed and I scald and I KO. So that's a huge, huge wall that's going to be out of the way soon. He does switch back into the Milotic, takes another round of rocks on it, takes the scald uh, on the switch in. But now I have a free switch into something as I know he has to uh, recover this turn. I know that he's going to be inclined to recover this turn, I should say. And I just end up switching out. I go into my Selby, which is pretty darn free in the situation. Uh, but I believe that I expect it not to stay in and I do turn out. Oh, no, no, no. OK, OK. I, I believe I remember what happens now. I, I I look at his team and I'm thinking to myself that um, no matter what wants to come in, I can either Giga Drain, which is going to be a free switch in for Age Slash, or I can click Earth Power, which would hit a lot of what uh, is still on his team right now. So I click Earth Power. I do a, just around half, about 40-ish percent. He pops a weakness policy, but um, at this moment, I felt this is a max defense LOE. I felt like I had to uh, outspeed this thing, get one more hit off on this thing, because I, again, I had a chance to KO. I had a chance to do something, but he just clicked Autotomize, which is nuts to me, right? Obviously, uh, because so now because he has Autotomize, it lowers the chance of him having uh, Shadow Sneak and Shadow Sneak would have been huge against my team, but this gives me the free U-turn because I kind of didn't. Oh, no, I didn't U-turn. I believe I just straight up switched because uh, I did, I guess, still fear the Shadow Sneak. I had to scout out for the Shadow Sneak at least, but I know that I can freely sack off my um, I know he has to attack and I could freely sack off my Electros and that'll give me the free switch into my Greninja, which can now water shuriken even if he does. OK, so if he did autonomize and um, have Shadow Sneak, then he wins. He beats me 100 percent. But um, I checked out his team afterwards. He did not have a Shadow Sneak. I believe it was just um, Venus policy with um, Iron Head and Secret Sword, if I'm not mistaken, which hits a majority of my team. But I do I do get the opportunity to beat him with priority. So now um, now he has to make some plays. He calls my switch into Selby with an ice beam, which now that now that I see that, now I can start to get a feel for um, how he's going to play this end game a little bit. But getting that age slash out of the way is still huge. However, we are still four to four in this at this point. And um, it's not the best, right? This game could absolutely go to timer. I we're, we're, we're DMing each other at this point and we're saying like, yeah, there's a very real chance that this match goes to timer. And um, thankfully, we can counter punch a lot of his uh, KOs, but I don't like being in this position. We are currently 43 turns into this match, right? And uh, this is taking a very long time in game. Uh, I do end up going into my Blastoise just uh, just as a pivot and he can very, very freely get himself back up to full as a Dragon Tail out to try to phase something out. And uh, what comes in? I don't even remember. In comes a Dragonite, which is reasonably fortunate for me because now I can force him to play to, to, to make this play. I don't think he wants to switch out again. Uh, he knows that I can Dragon Tail him out, which would be pretty detrimental to him. It just which ends up forcing him to go for the Dragon Zero in this moment, right? Totally fair play. Just wanting to guarantee the Oko onto my Blastoise. But what that does is it opens the door for my Greninja to come in because by forcing that play, by forcing the play for him to attack into me, that allows that allows me to take him out with Greninja without any Dragon answers up. So now it allows me to freely bring in my Greninja and threaten him with an Ice Beam. Part of me wants to believe that I called him switching out and I go for, no, I just go for the ice beam. He, he sacks us off, 100%. This was a sack because uh, this thing was not gonna do anything for the rest of the match. But um, I did want to go for the U-turn, honestly, expecting a Meloda to come in. If I did U-turn, then um, this thing would have gone down anyway. But if I did U-turn and he just clicked Dragon Dance for the sake of clicking Dragon Dance as sacking off that Dragonite, then I would have lost, 100%. But it does ring in the Milotic. It does give him the free switch into Milotic. So again, we are counterpunching. We are still three to three. And at this moment, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly expecting this match to go to timer. But thankfully, things are happening now. Like I said, the blast race is forcing plays. And uh, I believe, yeah. OK, so I go directly into my Infernape as he goes into 
is Dragonite. And here I ran a bunch of calcs because I had to see how much damage Flare Blitz was doing. And Flare Blitz, after that ran of rocks damage, was a 2 a KO. So no matter what, if he Dragon Dances, then... If he Dragon Dances, then I am still Scarfed and I am able to take this thing out with two Flare Blitzes. And that was exactly the opening that I needed. And judging on that Flare Blitz damage, even if he did, um, he would have had to have extreme speed, but who knows? He didn't even have priority on the Age Slash, so who knows? If, judging on that, uh, Flare Blitz damage, even if I, he did attack me and take me out, um, I could possibly go into my Greninja and KO with Water Shirk in here. But now again, I'm in a position where I'm, I'm in on my, my Lodic. Oh, and here was a bit of a stress play, right? Uh, by going for Flare Blitz onto that Dragonite, it kind of put me in a bad spot because um, Flare Blitz and Close Combat were both resisted. I could have gone for either. And he, of course, he gets the freeze on the Ice Beam. I was genuinely scared. I thought that that could have won in the game, but I do thaw out. Um, I had the opportunity to go for either Flare Blitz or or uh, Close Combat in that situation. They both did the same amount of damage, but I end up going for... Uh, Flare Blitz, if I'd gone for the close combat, then I could have gotten one final hit off onto that Milotic uh, as letting it take out my Infernape, but that big hit would have allowed me, would have uh, at least forced the play again. It would have either um, forced him to, 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 to recover or just eventually just hit me. And uh, no matter what, it would have had to have taken one big hit before KOing, which would have let my Celebi in, and then I can get a drain, and then we can go from there somehow. But uh, I played it a little bit weird. I, I went for Flare Blitz. I really shouldn't have gone for Flare Blitz, and that put me in a position where I did uh, just go for Dark Pulses into that uh, my loading, hoping for a flinch, hoping for a crit, hoping for something to happen in that situation. But he ends up just taking me out, which, again, it, it, it forces the play by dark pulsing continuously. It forces him to be at low enough HP where my Selby can come in. It can get that KO onto it. And then the last one in the back was the Aromatisse, which gets KO to, to South Rock. Which I was initially um, upset about because I wanted Selby to get the final two KOs of the game. But the South Rock KO is a KO for Selby regardless. And yeah, that was a very, very long one. I don't even know what to say about it. Uh, I think we played it the way that we had to play it. Like I said, there was a little bit of weirdness at the end of the game. If I'd gone for close combat, um, Greninja would have gotten KO'd and then I, it could have meant something for the MVP race because Greninja is slowly creeping on that KO race conversation. Both Greninjas are because Ultra Player has the has the um, Battle Bond Greninja and it is, I believe, at the top of the leaderboard right now. And... Uh, I would love it if Greninja could make a showing in there as well, but it's okay. I think I think we did our job regardless, and those uh, KOs at the end of the game were huge, 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 and uh, we did what we had to do. But with that, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back again really, really soon. Like I said, we have a two MPL matches back to back on back to back days. Uh, really, really soon, and then that'll get us caught up as we go into more UBL matches and. Uh, more ICBA matches in the coming weeks. But once again, with that, thank you guys so much for watching. And everyone, once again, out.